Andrew Womack Ministries presents part three in Grace, the Power of the Gospel, a six-part series. This teaching by Andrew is titled, Admitted into Grace. We pray that the Word of God will come alive in your heart as you listen. Today I'm continuing to teach verse by verse through the book of Romans. And I tell you, this has been rich. It's been powerful. Romans is Paul's masterpiece on the gospel. And we've been sharing some great things. We're now in the Romans chapter 4, and the last place I was was Verse 15, it says, Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. You know, I could preach on this verse for an hour. But let me just say some things quickly, and that is that most people misunderstand the purpose of the law. They think the law was given to help us overcome sin. No, the law was given to help sin overcome you. And I know somebody saying, that's not so. That can't be. Let me just use a couple of scriptures here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And in verse 56, it says, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. The law strengthened sin. It didn't strengthen you. In your battle against sin, it strengthens sin in its battle against you. Second Corinthians chapter three verse seven says, "But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious?" For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Did you notice in verse 7 it says administration of death? It's written and engraving in stones. What part of the law was written and engraving in stones? This is talking about the Ten Commandments and it calls it administration of death. Not life. And then in verse 9 it says the ministration of condemnation. Romans chapter 8, which we will eventually get to, says there is therefore now no condemnation. In the New Testament, Jesus is not condemning people. 
Olaba anti mundagane mpia Yesu yenyini tasalira bantu musango. The eighth chapter of the book of John he took the woman in the very act of adultery. Ne muyoka na munana Yesu bwe bamuletira omuchalo go bali bakwatide mu chikole echo bwenzi. And he said neither do I condemn you go and sin no more. Namugama anti nange sukusalira musango na ye genda todda mukono nanate. He didn't impute people's sins unto them. Olaba anti note yabate kako bibi byawe bo. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 says he was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing man's trespasses unto them but the law imputed people's sins unto them so there's a misunderstanding among most Christians that God gave the law, all of the commands. Do this, do this, don't do this. And that he gave these things to set you free. From sin. But no, he gave them to make sin come alive. Romans chapter Chapter 7 says that. Jody, barumi musamfu watu wagamba. Ne barumi sat. Romans chapter 3 verse 19 says that the law stopped your mouth, took away your excuses. Ne barumi sat kumina muenda agamanti eteka liyasi saka mwako nerijawe biyokuwe kwa sabiyo na. And it be, made you guilty before God. It gave you a knowledge of sin. Ncheteka nerikuletera okulaba nkusinga maso gakatonda. Nerikuwa nukutegira HB. All of these things are necessary and they're good in their place. But none of them set us free. The law wasn't given to set you free, but it was given to show you how corrupted you were. Through sin so that you would quit trusting in yourself and instead you would throw yourself on the mercy of God. Nobody can ever earn right standing with God and the law made this clear. It it's always been true, but people were comparing themselves among themselves and saying, this person got by with murder, this person. Uh, it seems to be doing okay and yet they're living an immoral life. And so it must not be so bad. And so people were deceived about what sin was and what the penalty of sin was. They were comparing themselves among themselves, which the Bible says is not wise. And so God gave a standard, the law. That is absolute, it is unmoving. Societies change. We're changing on our values of what is right and wrong. The things that today are accepted 50 years ago were an abomination. In the a nation of America, and it's the same thing in other places. And so society is just a moving target. It just depends on which way the wind blows. God gave the law as a standard that was unmovable. And it brought condemnation. It brought death. It brought guilt. 
guilt. It brought knowledge of sin. And those things are necessary so that we turn from this self-deception. That we could somehow or another be pleasing to God based on our goodness. See, that's what the law was given to do, is to take away this deception and to show you that you needed a Savior. But once you come to the Savior, and once you accept relationship with God by faith, in what Jesus did for you, not what you do for Him. Once you accept that, then the law has fulfilled its purpose in your life and you don't need to be under this condemnation and constantly being condemned about how terrible you are. Instead, it's the love of God that constrains you as a believer. And the love of God causes you to live a godly life. So again, verse 15, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Agamba mubarumi nyaku minatano, tukubanga mateka gale tobusungu, na ye watali mateka era tiwaba oku ono. Na kale, ebyo katonda biya subiza, bisinzira mukukiriza, okusubiza kulioke kuberenga kwa chisa. And then he quotes from Genesis chapter 17. He says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, that's talking about raises the dead. And calls those things which be not as though they were. You know, this is a great example about the way God is. Let me just turn over and read this to you out of Genesis chapter 17. The Lord appeared unto Abram, and this is about 25 years after he had entered into the promised land. And God had promised him that someday his seed would inherit that. He didn't have any children. And yet the Lord kept telling him he was going to be the father of many nations. So he went into his wife's slave, Hagar. And had a child by her. His name was Ishmael. He was the father of all of the Arabs. And anyway, there was conflict uh, because over all of this. And finally, after this, the Lord appeared unto Abram. And uh, when he was 99 years old, the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. That's uh, Genesis 17, 1. 
tambuli ranga mbira girobi yange obelenga omutu kilivu uh, mudubede vede kumina msambu ulusoka and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and that will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Ayongera na gama anti mnoko bidi inti ndi kola na wenda gano ena ndi kuweza deli nji ibula imu ni yeyara wansi kutaka na sinza katunda katunda na amu gamba anti daba nko zenda gano na we oliba jaja wama wanga manji and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. The word Abram meant exalted father. The word Abraham meant father of a multitude or father of many nations. So he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. And then he says, For a father of many nations have I made thee. He says, I have. In other words, it was already done. I have already done this for you. And yet he didn't even have a child. He didn't have the promised child, Isaac, yet. He had Ishmael. But he didn't have but just that one child, and it wasn't the child of promise. And God changed his name and says, You are a father of a multitude because the father of many nations. Have I made you? That's what Paul is referring to over here in Romans chapter 4. He says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. That's in reference to he changed his name and called him a father of many nations before he even had a child. Before he had the child of promise. And so God calls those things which be not as though they are. You know, that's the way that God's faith works. Over in the book of Genesis chapter 1, God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And did you know it was the fourth day before he created the sun, the moon, or the stars for that light to come from? I've heard some people say, well, he was the light, and that may be. I don't know, but God created light four days before there was the source of what we now know as light. God calls things which be, he created light before he created the source for that light to come from. I'm telling you, God is not limited the way we are. This is a great truth right here. That God calls those things which be not as though they were. And when you get to walking with God, you can speak forth your faith, and man, it has creative power in it. And it goes on to say in verse 18, it's, give, it's talking about Abraham now. 
Norecho katuobo imu mkutambla ne katonda Osoboro kwe saka mwako no yogeda Evi gambo vyo kukiriza Ira vyo vidi mwa manyu gabi kutonda And it says in verse 18 Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be Agena masu na gamba rumi nyaku mina munana yogira ku Ibrahimu wano Agama anti Ibrahimu yakiriza na subiri wata subiri kika alioka belenga jajja wa mawanga manji ngabo cha yogirwa anti ezaddelio liliba bweditio when it was hopeless, when he was 99 years old and his wife was 90 years old. Wandi gami yon tite wali subi. Ibra ima ine miyaka chenda mumu enda mchala we ya ine miyaka chenda. Ejobu kulu. God told him you're going to have a child in the next year. So katuna namu gama nti ogenda kuzalo umano mwaka ugujia norejo. At the time the child was born, Abraham was a hundred years old. Omwana boya zali buwa yibula imu yali ama zoku ze miyaka chukumi. And Sarah was 91 years old. Sarah yimu chala we yali ya hinaka tiore miyaka chenda mugumu. Then did you know that there in the natural there's just no hope? Na yochi manyi inti mumubili mutufa ulaba te wali subi. But he believed in hope anyway. He went against natural things. This is how God's kind of faith has to work. You have to get to where you don't let the doctor, the lawyer, the banker. Override what God says. You get it says that he believed according to that which was spoken. So shall I see be. The Lord told him if you can count the stars in the sky. Or count the grains of sand on the seashore. So shall your seed be. Five words. He based his faith upon. And he believed. We have so much more that we could believe. So much greater promises. And yet Abraham was able to defy the odds and to see a child born when he was a hundred years old. When his wife was past childbearing age. He saw this great miracle happen because he put his faith on five words. So shall thy seed be. And in verse 19, and be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Boy, this is powerful. And like I said, I got minister on this an hour, but one of the reasons that people's faith falters is because they consider everything else. They go to the doctor and the doctor says, no, you're going to die. It's incurable. They go to the banker and the banker says, no, you are uh, not solid. We can't loan you any money. It's impossible. You'll never make it. They go to the lawyer and the situation looks impossible and they consider these things. But Abraham didn't consider anything else. 
You know, if the Lord was to speak to you at 100 years old, and tell you you were going to have a child, and supposing that was a good thing, most of us would rebuke it in like, no way. But if you were believing for a child, and if this was something you wanted, and if the Lord told you that a hundred years old you were going to have a child and your wife was 91, you know what most people today would do? They'd go to a doctor. And they'd check, get checked out. God, I mean, doctor, is this true? What God told me, could it happen? Or they'd go to the internet and they'd research. What's the oldest that any woman ever gave birth? To a child. And they would consider all of these other things. And then after a lot of unbelief came towards them through the negative things that they've gained. They would go back to the Lord and say, God, everything I see, it's, this is impossible. Are you sure? Is this really you? And then the Lord would say, yeah, and you would struggle and say, why is it so hard to believe God? And because you consider all of these other things that are contrary. If, you, if all you considered is what does God say? God says, by a strap, you're healed. Why isn't that enough for you? Why do you have to go and get it confirmed? Why do you have to go ask somebody? The Lord says you're above only and not beneath, the head and not the tail. You'll lend unto many nations and you shall not borrow, and yet most of us, we go to the world and we follow their system system of borrowing and going in debt and on and on. And it's the considering of everything else that causes our faith to falter. So in verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Did you know praise is is powerful. It says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 and that you abound in faith with thanksgiving. It says you abound therein and the word therein is referring back to faith. You abound in faith with thanksgiving. If you aren't thanking God, then your faith isn't really powerful. You know, as I was driving in today, I was looking at the sunrise, I was looking at the Garden of the Gods Park. Which is just a beautiful place. I was looking at Pikes Peak. And I was just thanking God, and I, I was thinking about this. That you know what? When you are thankful, it shows that your faith is abounding. When you aren't thankful, 
your faith is weak. Na yewo banga tuli muntu ayebaza okukiriza kona ko kuba kuna fo. That's what he's saying right here. Chinono cha yogera ko wano. It says he abound in faith or staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God. Agama tiyaleka yokukiriza irate yabusa busa mwebyo katonda bya musubiza na ye nafuna amanyo lokukiriza nga kudumiza katonda. If you aren't giving glory to God your faith is weak. Bo banga tokudumiza katonda okukiriza kokuba kuna fo. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Iranga ategerera dala ngabi ya subiza era ayinzo kubikola. There's a difference between between being persuaded and being fully persuaded. There's a lot of people who believe that the word is true. They believe God can do things, but they aren't fully persuaded. They will waver and doubt. They haven't spent the time to get it really established in their heart. But you can become fully persuaded like like Paul was or Abraham was Paul is referring to Abraham that he was fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able to perform verse 22 and therefore because he was fully persuaded and believed that what God said would come to pass therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. The word impute means you just put it on a person's account. They didn't deserve it. They didn't earn it. Omuntu ono abata chigwana abata chikolerede. It was a gift. It was just given to him. God gave him right standing because he believed. Not because he did everything right. Abraham did not do everything right. He lied about his wife, was willing to let other men take her. Commit adultery with her, not just once, but twice. He also went into his wife's handmaid he married his half sister which once the law was given Leviticus chapter uh, 18 says it is an abomination to marry a half sister and if you do so you have to be put to death Abraham did not live a perfect life but he believed God and because of that God counted it to him for righteousness it was imputed unto him and it says it wasn't written for his sake alone that it was imputed unto him but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. In other words, this is saying that these things that were written about Abram it blessed him and it and it reveals how he became in right standing with God through faith and that's all wonderful but it wasn't written just to tell us about a man that lived 4,000 years ago 
echo chirunji na ya tagama antine echo chako mabukumi kumusajyo ya vera wo e miaka angumi nya ejise it was written for our sakes na ya gama antino chawa andi kwa neku rafe kati abomu lembe guno so that we can learn that this is how you have a relationship with God undi tusoboloku yiga anti wotu wofu na enkola gani nojine katonda it doesn't matter what you've done it doesn't matter how you failed teche sigama kuchichicho oko ze oba chichicho olimere dua you don't have to earn relationship God offers it as a gift. Toyi na kukolelela kufuna mungkola gana nunji ne katonda. Kubanga katonda, echo ya chiwa yunge ichi dabo. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Rumi mukaga abili musatu. I'll be eventually getting over there. It says the wages of sin is death. Nja kubantu uka wawo na yaga mantino empera yechibi kwe kufa. All of us deserve death. Untifena. That is a payment. We have earned it. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 323. And the wages of that sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In other words, death is something we earned. We deserved it. But eternal life is not a payment. That is given to us because we've now straightened our life up. And we've done everything right. No, it is a gift. And it's just a gift that you have to receive. You can't earn it. You know, I give our materials away. Now, we say that, you know, this is for a suggested donation of whatever. Omanyi, evi nitu evi singa fe wano bie tukola, tubi wayo buwi. Tuga manti, elaba ntuba gamanti, ya haa, omutemu ogutele duwa kubi nitu bino, mutono dala. But over 50% of the people, ni ula banti, abantu, evi tundu atano, who write into us, don't give a thing. Aba tuwandi ikira, ngaba sabi bie nitu bino, ateno, boba kuraga, niti teba wayo chintu chona. And we send this material to them. Na ya tu ulaba ni wankupa, teba wayo, na ya tila tuba sindi kire evi nitu bino. Now, if it's package deal, we'll say that it's a minimum donation of something, but... Uh, just individual things here, the majority of people do not. Give us anything and we send the materials to them. And um, anyway, I had a woman contact many, many years ago, back when we were doing cassette tapes. And she says, I know that you said these three cassette tapes are free. But I, I always pay my way. And so I'm going to ask for these tapes, but you tell me how much I owe you and I will pay you back. And so we sent her the three tapes. We didn't send her an invoice. We didn't. Do anything. We just gave them to her. So she wrote in and she says, look, I don't know what happened, but I asked for three tapes and I told you to bill me and you didn't bill me. So uh, I'm asking for three more tapes. Now you've got to bill me for six tapes. And she made a big point of saying, I pay my way. You are not going to give me something free. And so she asked for three more and we sent her three more tapes and we didn't send her a bill. So finally she wrote in and she says, look, I'm asking for three more tapes, but this is now the third time. And if you don't send me a bill, 
mulundi kuno njagala mumpeleze obutambi busatu naye banange ku mulundi kuno we mutampeleza kiwandi ko kiranga mutemwa gwe nina kubawa I'll never get anything from you again I pay my way you can't give me anything free Sigena kuda mukufuna kintu kyo na kuvaje muri kubanze buli kimucho na kintu walanchi sasula temusobola kubanga mumpe bintu kubwerere And she got mad Omuchalo no yanyiga mwatu And she says now you got to bill me for nine tapes Na tugama antikati muteke dwa okumpa echi wandiko cha butambi muenda And so anyway I got involved and I wrote her I sent her a little cassette tape and Kati went to munange che nakola ne mbiyingira munne muwandikira ne muwereza yakatambi kamukatono bwekati Say look our tapes are free I said the stuff that I'm teaching is invaluable you don't have enough money to pay for it Ne mugamba nti munange ebintu bino byetu kolabya bwerere kubanja kana ku garment a byensome sabya muwendo nnyonti tosijina mutemo gozobola kubisa sura to inasende sobola kubisa sulira I said you're going to have to receive it free as a gift or you can't get it Nemugamba no recho oteke dwa okufuna ebintu bino kubwerere oba sikyecho toli bifuna And I went on to tell her I said now you can give us a gift Na yongera okumugamba anti naye gwe osobola okutuwa fetch labo That's how God supplies our needs and we encourage you to do that Bangira katonda bwatu bwagabirira byeta gobya fenorecho tukubiriza ante chikole but you are not paying for this material the gospel is free nenja gala nkugamenti ne wanku badecho chikola oyino kumanya anti tosa sulira bino byetukuwa kubanga enjiri ya bwerere and you can't pay for it nuru chitu sura kujisa sulira and anyway this one got upset never got any more materials from us e chama zimachiri ndio muchalo no yanyiga irate yadda mukutufuna ko chintu chona but see this is why salvation is salvation is a gift the wages of sin is death nenja gala ola bintu kozwe buti buli nti empera ye chibi kwe kufa but the gift of god is eternal life na e chirabo cha katonda bwe bula mu butagwao it's a gift you can't earn it chirabo tusobola kubango chikolerera you do not deserve it no kuchigwana to chigwana you have to humble yourself and receive it and you have to give all the glory to god you don't get any glory oli no kugonda go kusobola kuchifuna nechitiwo ina kuchidiza katonda to ina kwe wa chitiwa chona you aren't worthy of it you don't earn god's favor kubanga go to chigwanira era to sobola na kubanga ogwanira okukirizwa kwa katonda you just have to humble yourself and receive it as a gift ya to ino kugonda bugonzi ofuno okukirizwa kuno no bulunji kwa katonda nge kirabo but you cannot earn god's favor nengo ino kumanya anti to sobola kubanga okolerera era no osobola okufuna okukirizwa kwa katonda so in romans chapter 5 verse 1 it says therefore because of all of these things that have been said in the previous four chapters katwano watu kama balumi 5 olusoka gamanti kale bwetwawe ntikale katinga awumba wumbe bintu byone byogedwako mu sura zinenyezi ise therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ Agamanti kale bwe twawe bwe butukirivu roku kiriza tuline mirembe ne katonda mu mukama wa Yesu Kristo. Man that is profound. Kakulira ate kino kya makuru nyo. The only way you'll ever have peace with God is through faith. Engeri yoka jo sobola kufuna mirembe ne katonda kwe kukiriza. If you are on this treadmill, bwobanga kati oli kubine ebyuma of works, ebyuma bine ebyo bikolwa. Trying to earn favor in God, I'm going to study the word and I'm going to pray and I ngogeza kukula bango kufuna kukirizwa kwa katonda, ngogamanti katonda wange ngenda kusoma ebya wandikibwa, ngenda kusaba. I'm going to go to church, I'm going to pay my tithes, I'm going to live holy. I will not get mad. Ngenda genda mu kanisa bana ngira kuba utambulira mbutu kilivu sigena na kunyigira muntu yena my mate i will not do this and you are doing all of these things so that god can accept you omukozi wange ngenda mu yisa bulunji kugamanga bino byo nabyo no bikola mbo katonda aliyo kakukirize there will never be peace kankwe tulifuna mirembe and this is the way that a lot of christians are atenga echenna kuntu abakiriza abasinga we batwe bali they are trying to do everything they are trying to love their mate they bageza ko kola bulichimu bageza ko kwagala abagala ababwe trying to love their kids or trying to work in the church and they're bagala bana babwe bageza ko kola bino nabili makanisa doing all of these things and they it's like they're juggling a hundred things and if ngaba kwasaganya kino na chiri kwigamanga bala bikanga bakole bintu binji they stop at one moment the whole thing's going to collapse but u ke chisera ngaba luuza anti singa balekira okukola ebintu byo nabi babigenda kumenyeka there is no peace when you feel like you you have to earn God's favor. 
na yete wasobola kuba mirembe gwengo linendo woza ntyo inokolerera okusimwa kwa katonda i'm telling the only way you'll ever have peace is to be justified by faith kan kugambe nti engeri yokajjo sobola kufuna mirembe jino gwe kwe kutukirizibwa okuyita mukukiriza not by works not by your efforts but just receive it as a gift so sibiko lwasima anyi go na ye ochifunanga kirabo man that is one powerful scripture therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God. Kino che chimu kubya wandikwe bya manyi wagama anti kale bwetwawe bwo butukirivo roku kiriza tuline mirembe ne katonda. Through our Lord Jesus Christ and in verse 2 by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Mumu kama fe Yesu Kristu muye mwetwayi tokufune kisa kino chetu yimiride mu and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Ila tusanyuka ne mukusubira kwe kwe tulina Notice it says we have access by faith into this grace. The word access right there, the Greek word is the word that we actually get admission from. You know, if you want to go to a movie theater, you have to buy a, a ticket. You have to gain admission. There is a payment to be made. How is it that we gain access or admission? Oba, okutuka. to the grace of God. It's not through works. It's not through your holiness. It's through faith. And let me say it this way, that if you are trying to earn and saying, God, you owe this to me. But because I go to church and I pay my tithes. And I've done this and this and this. And now you owe me this answer to prayer. You can't gain access by that. The only way to gain access is to just humble yourself and say, Father, I'll just receive it as a gift. I put faith in what Jesus did for me. My faith is not in myself. The real victory in the Christian life is understanding that Jesus has already done everything and you just rest in him. Man, I've got a great teaching that would go along right here from Hebrews chapter 4 about our Sabbath rest. I haven't got time to go into it, but there is a rest for the people of God. Where you have ceased from your own works. And instead, you are basing your life on what Jesus did for you. Not what you do for Jesus. So, that's how you gain access into this grace. Another point that this verse makes is that in Roman in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, 
GRACE IS GOD'S PART. GRACE IS SOMETHING THAT GOD DOES FOR YOU. Echisa checho echiri kuruda lwa katonda. Echisa checho katonda cha korela gwe. INDEPENDENT OF YOU. NGA GOTULINA WOCHI KUWA TAGANIRAKO. MATTER OF FACT, GRACE CAME THROUGH JESUS. MUBUFUNZE ECHISA CHAJA OKUYITA MUYESU. JOHN CHAPTER 1 SAYS, WE BEHELD HIS GLORY FULL OF GRACE AND TRUTH. MUYOKANA EMU AGAMANTI TUARA VECHITIWA CHA KATONDA ECHIJUDE Echisa namazima. And Jesus is how the grace of God was manifested into this earth. That was 2,000 years ago. Ngato kuhita mu Yesu, echisa cha katonda bochi tobe chala visikuwa kuhusu kuno na inga, e jono tuo gira kumiaka nkume bilie jajita. Before you and I were born, before we existed. Gwenangi ngate tuna zali wangate tuna luo zana kubira u. So grace is independent of you. Nurecho kati echisa guto ina uchi kwa ataga nilako. It was prior to you even even existed it was prior to your need grace has nothing to do with you now it benefits you but it is not dependent upon your work at all if it was dependent upon anything that you do then it's not grace and it says in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 that the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared unto all men. If grace alone saved you, then all men would be saved because it's independent of our performance. It was done 2,000 years ago before you and I existed. So if grace alone saved you, if all it was was the grace of God, then every person would be saved, every person would be in right standing with God. Every person would be perfect because grace has appeared unto all men. But it says in Ephesians 2.8, you are saved by grace through faith. And this verse, Romans chapter 5, verse 2, we have access, admission by faith. Into this grace. And this is a critical piece of information. God's grace is the same towards everybody. If it wasn't, well, then it wouldn't be grace. If it was based on whether you were worthy of it, it wouldn't be grace. God's grace is the same. But not everybody receives the same. Not because of God's grace being different towards people. But because people respond, some people respond in faith. Webale kuuliza program ya fe ya Gospel Truth. Tukiriza nti owele duwa nyo mkisa okuita mkusome sewa kuno. Mwabango ya gara tusabeko na awe, oboli na echibu uzo chona, oboli nobu julizi kwecho katonda chako zo kuita kuprogram weno. Tukubile ko kuna maza simu zino wa manga. 0 bili 0 0 satu satu 0 0 0 0 Ngambie, eri 0 bili 0 0 satu satu 0 0 0 0 Oba, 0 musamvu musamvu munana Atano mutano, nkaga mutano Nsamvu. Ngambie, 0 musamvu musamvu munana Atano mutano, nkaga mutano Nsamvu Kuluo kwa gala kwa katondo kutali koko mojoli Tuogiru umkisa kwa katonda Tuogere nkula akulana, ila tuogere ukonye zewa, mulinyari ya mukama fe yesu, uwele duanyo umkisa.